Hello and welcome to episode 53 of the Do More With Your Money podcast. I am your host, TJ Van Gerven. On today's podcast episode, I'm going to share with you how to interpret and understand your vesting schedule for your equity compensation. Let's start with the basics. What is a vesting schedule? A vesting schedule is a period of time in which you have to remain employed with the company for you to receive your equity compensation. Vesting schedules are a way to incentivize you to continue to work with the company. So sometimes there are vesting schedules with equity compensation. Sometimes there's vesting schedules with a 401k match where you have to remain employed you know, over a certain amount of years to receive the full amount of your 401k match. And the same thing applies with a vesting schedule with equity compensation. So the first step in understanding your vesting schedule is getting some kind of timeline for how often you're going to receive shares. And more importantly, understanding are you receiving restricted stock units or are you receiving stock options? Restricted stock units are more common than stock options. That is just equity ownership in the company where you are given shares upon vesting. The vesting date is when you actually receive those shares, are taxed on those shares, and then you're able to actually sell those shares depending on open trading windows. So if you have your timeline for your vesting schedule, you'll see how often those shares vest. Typically, shares vest at equal intervals. Sometimes it can be monthly, sometimes it can be quarterly, sometimes it can be annually. You know, typically vesting schedules don't go longer than four or five years, but depending on what you've negotiated or you know how high level you are, you could have a very long vesting schedule where maybe some of the shares are given to you up front. So oftentimes there is a cliff vesting, meaning that you're given a large percentage of those shares up front. Maybe you're given 25% of the total grant amount up front after the first year, and then it vests equally over four years or something like that. So again, understanding your vesting schedule is so important because it gives you an idea of, you know, I don't like to use this term, but being handcuffed to a company financially, depending on how good it's, you know, how good the, the company stock is doing, you know, can influence your long-term plan. Now, I would always advocate that you work somewhere because you enjoy it and it's not just for the money, but obviously there is a balance there where if you are trying to maximize the value of your equity compensation, you know, you want to be mindful of your vesting schedule because if you leave the company, <clears throat> before shares are vested, you lose those shares because unvested shares are illiquid. You don't, you don't have access to them. So it's important to know, you know, if I leave before this time period, I'm going to be leaving all of this equity on the table. And again, you want, you can be mindful of the share price and say, well, it's, it's really not worth as much as it was, or it's actually gained a ton of value since I started working there. So Early on, when you're working for a company, the first thing you should be figuring out is your vesting schedule and what type of equity compensation you have. There are tax planning strategies for these different types of equity compensation, which I've talked about in previous podcast episodes. I would recommend you go back and listen to them, especially in the way of, you know, restricted stock units. As an award, when they're awarded to you, meaning that you don't have access to them, but you're granted them you can choose to <clears throat> prepay taxes on those shares. And then as they vest later on, you're not taxed at vesting because you already paid tax. And if you do sell, now you could be subject to a capital gain and specifically a long-term capital gain, which is taxed at a lower rate than your earned income. So that could be a substantial tax savings. But again, it's important to understand that vesting schedule because if you are to leave before you actually have those shares vest, not only are you leaving those shares on the table, but depending on how, you know, if you did that 83B election, depending on how many shares you paid tax on, you could be paying taxes on shares that you've never received. So those are kind of the basics of understanding a vesting schedule. To summarize, the vesting schedule can often have a cliff vest where, you know, after a year you get 25% or more of the overall shares, and then you have an equal amount vesting over a certain period. Vesting schedules can be anywhere from monthly to quarterly to annually. It really is dependent on the equity comp plan. 
you know, I always recommend that you get all of the documents and maintain all the documents when you receive your equity compensation, because, you know, the truth is, is I've worked with, you know, dozens of equity compensated employees. And the thing I always hear from them is that there really isn't much support for understanding their equity compensation. They're kind of just given these shares and then they're, it's on them to kind of figure out because these companies, especially if they're more of a private company and a startup kind of company, they don't have the resources to, to dedicate to having someone explain to you tax optimization around your equity comp. It's really on you to figure this stuff out. And so that's why it's so important to work with an unbiased third-party professional. And I will leave that to plug myself. If you are interested in uh, getting help with your equity compensation, optimizing taxes, and ultimately planning for financial independence, I'd recommend heading to modernwealthbuilders.com, learning more, considering uh, doing a free assessment and go from there. So as always, I hope you have a great rest of your week and talk soon. Lastly, I want to remind you to do you because in a world of increased commoditization, nobody can replicate you. This podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. None of the information provided in this podcast is intended as investment, tax, accounting, or legal advice.